<laughs> Dave's psychotic today. But here's the good news. Our chat room is full. Make sure you get in it. We got a brand new ITL, and Andrew Whooper has come to the place. What place is it? Yay. Pensado's place. Let's roll it. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry we're giddy again today. What can I tell you? Um, today I've got my good friend and someone I've had quite a bit of respect for on a number of levels. We, we got really close working a lot together in the past. I've got Andrew Whooper on with us. Andrew has the distinction of having more individual unique nicknames than any other mixer <laughs> in the history of the mix world. Right, right, right Drew? <laughs> Got quite a few. We got. Right. Uh, it seemed like every day, poor Andrew had another nickname, and he's got a wonderful name. So I, 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 I actually I, was going to open the show and say, "We're going to whoop it this week." And oh I said, my God! No, Thank the you. The cheese for factor would have just been. It would have paid. Thanks so for I thanks did. for now. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, one day we ought to do a sizzle reel of, of your greatest hits oh from my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You had one that I really liked. I can't remember who it was. Um, it was the best pun ever. Was it Dylan? Uh, God only knows. Uh, uh, that, there's several, but you know, we'll we'll go yeah. back in the archives and pull it up, and put it yeah. under the Twizzle Flanger heading. I'm talking Twizzle Flanger. Yeah, that right. was the greatest thing. I've ever seen. Gotcha. <laughs> Pretty cool guy. That was incredible. I need to get one of those. Can I get one? We're 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 preparing them now to okay. make them available. Oh, right. I need a It'll test. make you say a boot instead of a bow <laughs> when you flip the Canadian. <laughs> That's just what I need too. <laughs> so anyway, enough frivolities. I've got a really good special into the lair for you today. Um, I, I also, we're going to spend a little time talking with Andrew about one of my favorite mixes. I didn't even know Andrew had done this song, and, and I fell in love with the mix. I, I asked Drew who did it, and of course Drew's clueless, as always. <laughs> and uh, then I found out that Andrew did it, and I'm so excited. And then Andrew's going to share some of his American Idol experiences. He's been in the trenches over there and working on the new Beyonce, a bunch of stuff. So Andrew's going to going to be very inspirational for a lot of you cats that are, that, are, that are out there asking me questions about the business. Want to do a little homework? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I was born a small child in southern rural Florida. Small black child. <laughs> <laughs> I started wow. to say the, 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 well, the jerk. That's right, the, Steve Martin. Steve Martin, the jerk. Take it, Herb. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, thanks for your comments and questions and stuff from last week. We got a bunch of them. Special shout out to Michael Nunson or Nunson, not sure we're pronouncing it connect correctly. He's with the Musician Institute. He sent us a cool thing about how they oh, use yeah. the show. And um, frankly, to a lot of you guys out there, to a lot of schools out there, we get a lot of school requests. We're talking about doing some maybe interesting things and maybe bringing the show to some schools and doing it live. But um, education and reaching guys and, and, and helping them out is big for us. So. Um, uh, I think well, I checked this morning, last time we had about 10 schools, about six in the country and four internationally who've reached out and stuff. So we enjoy that. We're in some interesting discussions there, so thank you for that. Um, obviously, reaching out to us and comments are important. You know the places. Uh, the page will pop up. You want to hit uh, our Twitter handle at Pensado's Place. You see the screen right now. Facebook, YouTube, normal stuff. Our chat room is full, and manning our chat room is our guy. Drew Adams. Yay! Drew, What's up, everybody? Drew, Drew's promised to be. <laughs> Hit me up. Give me questions. <laughs> Drew has promised to be more animated today. He's that was pretty animated. That was, the, that was very that good. Was really good. In the hand motions. Good. You know what's bad? <laughs> I never raised my hands before. Very good. Go. Very good. This is all there. We're, we're watching growth here. Um, <laughs> so we Drew, want to do that. Drew's the coolest in here. Absolutely. We love, love we, Drew. We love Drew. I'll so get on, your bro. comments and stuff to us. Um, lots of exciting things coming in the in the future, we can't talk about yet, but we're planning. And uh, why can't we talk about it? It's our damn show. We do what we want. Because I said true. So. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to Dave, and I think Dave's going to set up an ITL. Yeah. Um, when we had Michael Brower on the show, a lot of you guys were um, fascinated by his approach to uh, the mixing process. And so I thought what I would do was expand on something we had talked about earlier, uh, a digital way to philosophically accomplish what some of the things that Michael was trying to do. Now, nobody can be Michael Brower. If you want to sound like Michael, run, take out a $20 million loan and get the stuff he uses. If you're a little short on that, check this ITL out because 
I tried to be honest to his philosophy, and, and the basic tenet and foundation of that philosophy is don't try to get a compressor to do all the heavy lifting at one time. Get, get the heavy lifting done in steps. So um, Will dropped by Vibrant Street yesterday and shot this. So anytime you're ready, Will, let's do it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Into the Lair. It's been a second since we've had an Into the Lair, so if I'm a little rusty, you got to bear with me. But uh, I've been trying to think of something really cool to bring you guys. And um, I think because of some of the information that Jay mentioned on his show, uh, Brower on his, Phil on his, um, Joe, uh, Bruce, some of the guys. Uh, I think a lot of you guys have, um, you wouldn't call it penis envy, I guess it'd be like audio envy, uh, analog envy. And, and, and some of you guys are starting to feel like you're inadequate because you, you, you don't have a one of everything ever made like Michael has and Jack Joseph Puig. So what I thought I'd do today was um, take a little bit of that um, covetousness away from you and show you not the way but a way to work that will give you uh, the ability to to, to, to to formulate your own process of working. Uh, I'm not going to say this replaces anything Michael does because that's just not possible without the equipment and the brain that he has. But what, what you can do is if you put a little bit of effort, a little bit of time into experimenting, I think this, this will open up some pathways for you that you can feel comfortable about taking some of his techniques and some of the things we learned from him and applying them within the format of, of uh, a Pro Tool session or a Logic session or um, whatever whatever your DAW of choice is. So let's jump right in. We went we went over this a while back, and um, I'm 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 going to require you to to do a little homework. Go back and, and go to Michael's website and try to understand not what he's doing necessarily, but why he's doing certain things. One of the things I learned from, from Michael is, and I'm paraphrasing, if, if, if I got this wrong, Michael, let me know, but one of the basic foundations of what a lot of guys try to do, Manny, uh, uh, Tony, a lot of the greats, John Marie, uh, Jay, uh, is they don't try to do all the heavy lifting with a compressor at one time. So in other words, if you've got a compressor and it's across a particular source of material, <clears throat> you can and, and, and you can whack off 20 dB, but it's gonna it, it it might be the coolest thing ever, and you might change uh, recording history and get your own little engineering Grammy, but it, maybe not. So one of the concepts that a lot of these guys, if if you're listening to the show like I am, trying to learn every little morsel and every little advantage I can get from these guys. Um, sometimes it's better to do a little bit at the source track, a little bit via an aux, and a little bit via the stereo bus. So that's kind of what I've come up with here. So let's, 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 let's scroll down to my drums. Okay, here, here's here's a kick drum right here, this purple track right here. Uh, this was basically what I was given on this particular session. And um, now we can compress this, which we did. We, we put a little, little 1176 on this. Just kind of controlling it a little bit. And then you can see here I've, I've added a couple of samples to the, um, well I've added this sample here to, to the kick. This is just uh, our old buddy, Trigger by Steven. And then this, this was given to me by the producer, this is a sub. And then I'm taking a piece of, um, I'm taking a piece of these two guys and I'm sending it to a parallel chain. So you'll see that pop up here in this parallel chain. We're doing a little more of the compression, a little more heavy lifting. Um, I must have had a good 
idea for that, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. So now we've got our compression. So now what we, we we've, we're doing similar things with the snares and all uh, on and on and on. So so now let's go back up here. If I'm making you dizzy with all this moving around. So now we've got we've got four oxes. We've got an ox that's receiving all of our vocals. We've got an ox that's receiving all of our drums, all of our music. And this, this, this one changes for me from session to session. This particular session, I wanted to have global control over the amount of effects, just so I could hear it drier, wetter, drier, wetter. But this can be, um, this can be anything. You can, you can split your live guitars, your rock guitars here, and your synths here. Um, what? What? What's that? Dave, what did you do with the bass? Well, the bass, I, I, I sometimes put with the drums if I want a certain influence of the compressors uh, to receive from the bass. In this particular song, I put the bass into the, um, into the music. Now, if you notice, I'm getting a little dirt right here. Don't anybody panic. It's okay. I'm a professional. Um, I like a little dirt. So that's coming from uh, some of the noise from the plugins. But it's, it's, it's so low, it's okay. I, I actually kind of like it. So uh, if you have any criticisms about this, address your letters to <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll defend me. Now, at this point in time, everything's coming into, into here, okay? Now, all of these are dumping out to my print track. Now, what I call my print track is a master fader that allows me to have access to the 48-bit architecture. We've gone over this before. There's some good reading on the Pro Tools website about this. Now, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm also running all this information into an aux. I don't want to put any plugins on my on my uh, master fader, nor do I want to put them on my print track. I'll monitor something on the print track. This is I was just checking to see some stuff, but now I've got my L2 here. Let's let's disregard the L2 for now. So now we're. All our drums are coming into our drum aux right here. Let's bypass the, this L2007. Okay, now with this, I'm knocking off, looks like, uh, if I'm reading this accurately, Will, it looks like 2.75314 dB, which I always like to use. Um, a ratio of pi when I'm when I'm doing decimals. We'll go into that later. With, without. Okay. Now, the parallel compression on the kick and snare are adding a little tiny bit of compression. The L2, the L2007 is adding a little bit of compression. Now, all of these are dumping into the stereo bus. And then let's, you can see I'm, 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 I'm doing 3 dB on the L2. Let's see what that adds. Okay. Let's see if I can do an AB quick enough. Let me get these, let me get these guys close enough so I can hit the buttons quick. Okay. With. Oh, I didn't do it fast enough. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, with. It's, it's significant. It's, you know, I'm not going to say that that's night and day, but when you're competing against a lot of other stuff on the radio, that could be enough to give you an advantage. And I'm not whacking the piss out of it. I mean, this is just gentle kind of stuff. So, okay, without, with. Okay. Now, on the music side, what I'm doing... There's my bass. Let me move these so you can see.
and then I'm just using uh, a compressor. I, I, I love the uh, Waves SSL Stereo Bus Compressor. I love, uh, there's any number of compressors that really work well. Here again, I, I, I chose the Massey for, for this because I was just, I wanted to see what it would do, and, and I got lazy and didn't take it off. I really like it. I'm not sure you'll hear anything here. Well, it's just one guitar. Let me, let me go back. Very subtle, very subtle. It's basically just, think of it as we're trying to make, we're trying to make the L2 have to do a little bit less work. So now, let's bring, let's bring everybody in. I'm not sure if we're going to hear much, but let's try. Let's take all these off real fast. You kind of hear that, can't you, Will? And even at the volume we're listening to now. Very cool. Let me, let me go back. Okay. Okay. When you go back and, and play this back, and you might want to play it back, uh, listen... For the sound of the snare changing, listen to the decay on different instruments changing, listen to the rhythm changing, the feel, the vibe. Don't just listen for compression. Train your ear to listen for what the compression is doing because we're not selling compression, we're selling feelings and emotions. If, if, if the compressors that we're using allow you to enhance the feeling and emotion of the song, then, then, then that's what we're selling. We're, 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 we're trying to give our listener three and a half minutes of escape from remembering all the, 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 the horrors of this world. So a little bite at a time, a little bit at the source. We take off a little bit. We, 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 threw, a, we threw a compressor across the kick and the snare. Then we parallel compress those, uh, which we've, we've gone over on another show. If you guys are unclear about parallel compression let me let me know and we'll do we'll do a feature on that so we, we a little, take a little bite of off at the source the kick and the snare mainly in the bass on the music track then we 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 have made a decision to control the influence that the bass has on the compression that we're using on the on the on the drums so, so we can't send everything straight to the stereo bus L2. We, we intercepted it along the way. We split the, the, the bass, the music, from the drums. We did a little bit of treatment on the drums, a little bit of separate treatment on the bass. So every time our bass is hitting, our kick drum doesn't go down in volume. The kick drum's controlling its own destiny in the mix. And then we take those four pieces of information, these four guys here, the red ones, we we dump those into a master fader. Which the reason we do that is because the the forty eight bit architecture output of that master fader gives us enough headroom to handle all this information without without clogging down or choking down or or or, um, or losing headroom. Um, an analog console like the ones we use probably has twenty eight dB of headroom. Uh, I, I want you guys to, to do your research and find out what adding this 48-bit master fader, how much extra headroom do I get over the old 24-bit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to freak you out. It's going to be a neat thing for you to discover. And then, of course, after that, we, we let the L2 do what it does best instead of brute forcing all this stuff together and being influenced by all these different low-end pieces of information, we can select what the L2 is making its decisions about. I know, I know I'm getting a little flowery with this speech, but um, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to show you the, the, the logic behind this concept because I know, there's, I know there's a thousand of you guys out there way smarter than me, and you can come up with something and show me next week. All right. Back to you, Dave. Let me show. Nobody's sent it in yet. Hey guys, uh, I, I know you. I know you'll spend a little time with that. One. It's really good. That was an artist named Zhao, and um, 
Did I say it right, Herb? You so, did. So. Which is infinitely better than what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so. Of course, Zoe. Uh, I've taught her everything. We've been working together the last couple of days, and I'm a huge, huge fan of hers. Her producer and uh, co-writer, Phil Grice, um, is just doing some exemplary uh, work. She's a multi-platinum artist in France and a bunch of other countries. Check out her videos. And uh, you'll see a graphic on the screen in a minute if Will does his job. He will. He will. And uh, uh, I just want to thank her and, and Phil so much for letting us use this. It's, 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 it's a great song. It's going to be a great single. Uh, with any luck, I'll, I'll maybe I can get permission to show you some of the stuff we did on the vocals with that. So, um, How about our guest? Who's that? Uh, nobody. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> How about Dallas? No, no. How about Andrew? Andrew. We're going to jump right in with Andrew. Andrew Whooper uh, is our guest today. Uh, a lot of you remember an ITL that Andrew did where he delineated would be um, his vocal chain and uh, how he was getting those great vocals. And as a matter of fact, since we saw him last, he's uh, worked on the new Beyonce record, the new... Mary J. Blige, uh, Leona Lewis, right. Semi Precious Weapons. You know, just staying busy. I bet that Semi Precious Weapons. It's amazing. Stuff. Did Tricky write on that? Yep. Um, basically, what the concept with that was is they came to us with some records that were already finished, and Tricky kind of went in and kind of did his thing on top of it and put his magic on it, and the stuff turned out amazing. So I'm really excited about that. I started to say Tricky's one of the most underrated, but he's, he's not underrated. <laughs> Everybody knows how great that guy is, but we get to see him during the creative process, and I'm telling you, Herb, it's scary, it's, it's scary yeah, what this yeah. man can do. And it's scary how long he's been that talented. <laughs> I first mixed for Tricky with Immature, I think he was 14? Yeah, absolutely. He used to hang around the studio where we worked all the time. We was, being Herb and Brian McKnight. But he was a, just a relentless student, relentless in the room. Still is. Always a cool presence, too. Like, even though he was a young guy, he was always. a cool presence to be around, smart. Yeah. Um, and, and his whole family has been just committed, and they've created quite a thing. Yeah. I, I pretend like I, I, I've got it going on, but I don't. I'm just like a... But we we you know those that. little balls that you throw them, and they just bounce around the room for six weeks? Super balls. That's me. Mm -hmm. Super <laughs> balls. Thanks, Herb. You're welcome. I didn't know you cared. Uh, it's our age. <laughs> Is this another knob day? <laughs> no, we got to get back to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but Andrew, uh, thanks. Poor Andrew, he ain't never gonna show up again. Well, but Andrew knows to, me. He's, he's used to it. It's all them who don't. Yeah. Who don't know I've what told you guys stories about Andrew where uh, he had been my assistant for about a week and and really hadn't quite caught on yet. And next thing you know, blam, we're on the way to the Palms in Vegas with Zoe and all our friends up there. And it, Andrew is like, well, this is gonna be a cush job, you know. I get to get to right. the <laughs> assistant engineer to quit that day. Ooh. So now Andrew is in a strange room, a, a strange country, Nevada with strange people, Jason and I, and um, uh, he, he oh, talk about OJT, poor Andrew didn't sleep it for about two weeks. I don't think you got more than three hours sleep in two weeks. I mean, I know, I you, didn't, I I know you didn't asleep. have hotel rooms. I don't know I where you I fell slept. asleep with my face on the console at one point, I think. I think I, I, I think I woke up with my face like this and <laughs> look and see the pink recording band going on for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that pass is done. But I tell you what, Andrew and I were talking before the show. It's that kind of dedication. If you don't have that, then there's plenty of things for you to do in audio, and, and there's plenty of things that will make you fulfilled and that you can have fun. But for those rare few people that have that distorted uh, gene that makes you want to do this, right. uh, we wear our lack of sleep as a badge of honor on this side of the world. Absolutely. So, man, uh, I'm excited to hear... Uh, I said at the earlier part of the show, um, Drew and I, every once in a while, we, we, we exchange things we've been listening to, and Drew hit me to Novocaine by mm -hmm. uh, Frank Ocean, and I'm listening to that, and I'm thinking, this is really cool. I mean, it's like, how, how uh, this mix is just, I don't know how to describe it. What was my original words? I said, this is the, this is the greatest... Well, what's, what's cool about it is that this is Dave's show, and we get to talk about Dave's favorite song. It is legitimately, Dave loves listening to his song before he even knew that Andrew had mixed it. So that's the whole point of the show, why it's so cool that you yeah. know, everything came together. But the, the mix was amazing. The song's great. 
and the whole content of everybody of that whole campus is original. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the um, the camp, um, the Odd Future camp, not because we don't want to, but because it it, it it's too cool to to be discussed in this format. Yeah, <laughs> it's just too cool what those guys are doing, but. The one thing to take away from that is the support that these guys give each other and, and being able to create and find people that have the same likes, dislikes, and philosophies as you. It gives you the courage to go out into the world. And, and, and these guys, uh, I, don't understand, I don't understand everything they're doing, but what I do understand is when I see something that's from the heart and is real. And right. my life experiences are different than theirs, but there is a small universal quality to what they're doing that I can relate to. Mm -hmm. But the um, the mix, what, I, what what struck me about the mix was I could tell somebody knew what they were doing, mm -hmm. but they didn't shove it in my face and try to make it about the mix. You right. you, you found a way to take both things you learned right. from me <laughs> and really use it correctly, not correctly, but use it to amplify the song and not right. your own ego. Absolutely. Um, I mean, when we jumped into Frank's project, there was a very clear vision. It absolutely was not R&B. Um, we wanted, with Novocaine specifically, um, we wanted it to feel hip hop and be hip hop, but still sound kind of, you know, pretty on the top and, and have his voice kind of really speak to you, but with kind of an, a grimy... What effect did you use on his vocal? Um, TL Space, um, the impulse, I have a whole collection of impulse responses, um, you know, probably similar to the ones that you have. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember specifically which one it was exactly. Was it a, was it a tight room, like a... a yeah, it was, it was a hall. Room? It was oh, definitely okay. a hall. Probably shorter. Um, some really short delays just to kind of give it some, you know, depth and space. Now, when you say short, like a 16th, a 32nd, do you remember? Probably a 16th. 16th. Um, like a slap. And then uh, what I like to do also is after the delay, I like to put a shorter reverb on it that kind of even makes it fall even further back into the speakers. Oh, wow. So I did that. Um, a lot of little delay throws, subtle delay throws. Like I went through and just detailed his vocal every little part. And I, on the really important, impactful words, I tried to put like a little delay throw just to kind of make your ear kind of catch it. Are you still pissed off at all the delays in the world, or have you kind of come to odds, <laughs> come to terms with all? It depends. But we're all know. using these 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 gear for 20 years and here's this little <laughs> up and coming snot boy whooper snapper <laughs> and he and a whooper snapper that was going and he goes he goes Dave do those delays drive you crazy I'm like well no he said well listen to the decay they decay out of time oh yeah the echo farm does that it drives me and nuts. I'm like yeah. Yeah. Why did you have to tell me that <laughs> I, I don't there's things I just don't need to know I don't want to know my I can't say that joy will kill me. Good. There's just things I don't want to know, and my delays decaying out of time. Isn't I don't. He has destroyed. Me. Sorry about that, D. But yeah. anyway, go ahead. But uh, um, I'm a very visual engineer and visual mixer. I have to see a picture of what the song is saying. So to me, when I was diving into that record, I wanted it to sound like Novocaine. Like I wanted it to sound kind of like I wanted all of your senses to kind of be. You know, tickled, no. right? Like the line in there, but I can't feel my face. Right. <laughs> the uh, the story that Frank is telling is so amazing, yeah. and what he's saying, it's so the way he writes, it makes it so easy to put a visual picture to what he's saying. So, do you think he's making this up, or is that what you're hearing in the mix? No, that's, that's what you get from it. It's just <laughs> you think he's making it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know what he means. It's yeah, a, you know, a record like that is not just because he trains now. Don't, don't go easy on him. <laughs> a record like that is not necessarily about the sonic purity of it. It's about the story that Frankie's telling and yeah. the amazing musical landscape that Tricky created to tell that story. Yeah. So but somehow you could tell there was. A, a, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the production. Or it's probably a lot of it has the production and mm -hmm. some of it you. But there's just something when I hear it. You know how I am. There's right. sometimes when I hear a mix that's so good it just makes me angry. It mm. just pisses me <laughs> off. I've seen that. And I can't I can't function in the real world until I either come close or I either understand why I like it. I, I, and and I'll torture myself for weeks. And that that had that effect on me. I just I can tell you every time he came over. Uh, to assist for me, I'm, 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 I'm like, listen to this, listen to this part, check this out, listen to what he's doing here. Who the hell did this, Drew? 
and then I, I think I think I was calling you, telling you you got to hear it, and you go right. Well, we well, were we were speaking about something else on the phone, and you're yeah. like, man, there's this this Frank Ocean record that's amazing. I was like, oh yeah, and I did a couple of mixes on there, and you're like, you didn't do Novocaine, did you? Like as a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> like that that made, made my month. And that, told that, me that. that 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 was just the coolest thing ever because. Um, the guys that, that assist for me, we work together a lot, but I'm, I'm very, very proud that, that they're all unique. And, and mm -hmm. even though sometimes I cast a shadow that's a little hard for them to come out from under, every one of them is better than me. Every one of them is more unique. That, and <laughs> and, and I, they, they think they've learned something from me, but I'm a little piece of every one of them, you know? Like Andrew, I, I've always said uh, that, that of all the assistants I've had, you probably had the widest taste range. Like you'll You'll come in one day, listen to EA Ski, some uh, right. some hardcore underground rapper from Seattle, and then the next day you'll come in listening to Nine Inch Nails, and then right. like your taste range is so wide, and of of uh, of, of course I'm I'm well, I'm familiar with what you've done, but then again here again I didn't know you did that one, but uh, <laughs> it seems like a like you found a way to get that taste range just kind of honed and just put into that. Well, I mean, I just, I'm like you, you know, I just mix from in here. Like, um, I grew up in kind of a, you know, I grew up on hip hop music, but also grunge music. You know, I was listening. You're from Seattle. From, right. Seattle. You know, I was listening to Nirvana and Soundgarden. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I would take that out and listen to Michael Jackson or Sir Mix a lot. Or, um, you know, there's a, a underground crew from Seattle called Old Dominion that, you know, oh, yeah. that I really was into. And it's, just sort of mixing all that together and harnessing all of that when you're working on the record is but not sonically just you're no. trying to re recreate those feelings that right, you had exactly you, before like, you knew why right it's yeah. i mean the sonic part and the training the engineer training comes with time and comes with experience but you know i've always had this sound in my head and, and this feeling you and, always have yeah. and then it just becomes about experience and and learning on how to generate those feelings to come out of the speakers. So, um, you know, with Novocaine, it was just, I mean, I could just feel it from the second that they wrote it, because I mm -hmm. actually engineered the writing session as well. Are you serious? Yeah. Um, and, wow. you know, the second Tricky hit that loop and Frank walked in the room and his eyes just lit up and, we, you know, they started diving into it, I knew, we all knew that this was going to be something special. And you could just feel it. Is it, it's out on Def Jam, right? Um, no, well, the mixtape is out. Um, it was put out by Red Zone, and I'm, I think Def Jam is going to be putting it out. I'm not sure how that's going to be working. You know, I'm, I'm not really hip to all of the the business side of how that's working. You know, yeah, probably I just we shouldn't discuss that I anyway. just stay in the studio <laughs> and, and do the work. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, Frank has had such an amazing vision for that project, and he and he really nailed it. And he fought hard to the keep hard the hard work. Too. Absolutely, he he's so creative and so detailed, and he cares about every little detail, and it has really you know shown. Him, right, Drew? Yeah, we uh, really uh, we worked together work. at Larrabee a couple times. There's, right. To to add to what Andrew was talking about, there was a session. It was maybe six six in the morning. And literally spent 130 takes on one word. Yeah. Like that's how detail oriented mm -hmm. that kid uh, Frank Ocean is. Like yeah. wow. it's refreshing. But I mean, and when it's done, you six, hear it. When it's when it's finished, you're like, damn. Okay, that's 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 unusual. That. <laughs> to do it's one thing, but to actually agree that it's better after that. Oh, adventure. absolutely. Everything he does makes everything better. Like he, it's he's he's a true talent. He's amazing. Uh, Drew, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to another subject. You got anything else you want to add to that? That I've that I've forgotten. As far as the uh, future camp, yeah. You know, I I mean, it's obvious that I'm impressed with that whole how the, how they just they kind of piggybacked on their own shoulders and success and just really ran with it and took off and just kudos to those guys and and everybody like that. That's really trying to do it because that's the cool. way you do it. That's kind of the uh, I agree. Idea. I agree. I, I, I'm I'm reluctant to talk too much about it on the show because because. It makes it less special somehow. And yeah, yeah. Plus, I don't think they'd get a big kick out of me talking about That's it anyway. Right. But <laughs> I, I do, I do, I do have a great respect for what they're doing. So the other part of your life is is American Idol. That's, and, uh, so now been. you get to sleep a little bit now that it's, it was over yesterday. Right. Um, that was just a grind to say the least. Um, you know, we're talking about forty-eight hours to deliver to program, record, and mix two songs. Um, you know, we got three hours with each vocalist. Um, 
and then after that three hours we basically had one day to do the overdubs the programming the backgrounds and then I would have I would start mixing at about four o'clock in the morning. I remember one day you called me at four and you were like, "I'm on the way to the studio." Yeah. I'm like, "On You're the like, way? <laughs> you mean you mean home?" You're like, no, "Yeah, I mean this my time slot to mix is from you said I think four a.m. to ten a.m. And yeah, and what, whatever you got done, that's what was on the iTunes. Yeah, and that's what was on the show. Um, it's it was difficult, but it was a great learning experience for me because. Um, you know, like what you were saying about the taste range thing, it really forced me to broaden my taste range, you know. Yeah, I, I remember you called me and you said, and, you said, am I supposed to put reverb, reverb on, on a banjo? banjo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that was heartwarming. Or it was like, I felt, I felt yeah. like. I, and I hit uh, Jason too, and I'm like, I'm like, have you ever had to EQ a banjo before? And Jason was like, <laughs> listen to Mumford and Sons, you know, like, uh, you know, Jason gave me some great advice too. Was, and I didn't. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> I said two, you know, in addition to. But, uh, um, you know, it's, and then I didn't grow, necessarily grow up listening to country music, so it was a little more of a challenge to harness that, that feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. But once I did it a couple times. You and, did an incredible job. Oh, thank you, You're man. getting compliments from the Nashville community and everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels good to, when you, when, you're, when you work really hard on something, and I guess a certain part of you is a little unsure about it, um, it feels really good to be able to deliver it and know that you did a great job. A lot, a large part of our audience has spent the last few months in prison and might not actually <laughs> understand exactly what we're talking about. Uh, the current um, version of American Idol, they're 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 making it a little bit producer oriented. So you'll see Tricky Stewart producing. You'll see uh, Rodney. Don was Rodney um, Polo Polo, all our buddies, right? And then uh, immediately. After the show, you guys take. Uh, is it uh, is it right after the show? Or the, you right after the show is over, the record goes for sale on iTunes that night. So, so it has to be, it's, it has to be mastered, mixed, yeah. stem like recorded everything. everything. And on top of that, we have to deliver stems of the version that goes to iTunes, which is a full version, and then Stem a short version for, the for them to perform to. <laughs> so when we hear, like for example, when we hear Scotty or uh, Lauren. They're performing the tracks you you mixed basically on the well, mostly show. Mostly Lauren. Um, we did one week with Scotty. It was kind of in the middle of the run, but we worked with Lauren for probably the last four or five weeks, mm. which was incredible. I, I really so like the one you did on the guy with the beard that just plays Casey. the big up. Casey. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. what you did on him too. Yeah, you did have a little good. help from my friends. That was the first week. Yeah, um, you did a good job on that. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. That um, that was the one mix that I didn't do in the box on that whole show. I actually did that on an API console. My wow. first time working on an API console. And, uh, you know, the EQ on the piano on that was uh, from the API. And um, they're the original APIs with the original op amps in them. You know, 20, the, 20, the 2520. 2520. 2520 yeah, those, yeah. those of you out there who are trying to get APIs, make sure you get the originals. The, the yeah. original op amp sounds much better than well, the reissue. Without that, they're not. <laughs> yeah. I so, um, yeah, that was I was really happy with that one too. And um, did you notice that you were doing anything differently, knowing that your mix was going to ultimately be on TV as opposed to being on on on? Uh, no, um, I didn't because I didn't want to throw myself out of a comfort zone. Like um, with such little time to deliver, I couldn't really reinvent the wheel. I couldn't really. Um, Generally, f from the time you sat down to mix to the time you had to be done was what about four to six hours per song? Um, yeah, sometimes longer, sometimes less. There was a couple mixes I had to turn around in three hours. Um, generally, probably six or seven hours is there of mixing a, time. Is there a horrible mistake you made that we can all go listen to and find out that you can show? Um, there was one record that I swear. I was fighting with the bass, like, is it loud enough? Is it too quiet? And then when I listen to it now, there's just not enough bass for me, and I just hate it. I cannot stand Make it. Make a note of that, Drew. What song We're is going to feature that every show from <laughs> now on. Uh, it was during, we'll just say it was during the Motown week. <laughs> the Motown records. Uh, no bass on a Motown record? I know, man. Who the hell sacrilege. did you learn from? Oh, man, it was sacrilege, man. I, I listen to it, I'm just like, oh, why did But I, I remember you going three and four days with no sleep. I mean, zero yeah. sleep. Uh, yeah, and because, like, what you also have to remember about the idle thing is this was just on the weekends. I was still doing my other sessions during the week, so it was, there was really no catch-up in between time, you know, to rest or anything like that, but 
uh, you know, like Dave was saying earlier, you you got to have that. Uh, you you really it's got to be more of a lifestyle than it's a, a job. badge of honor when you make it through yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Know? And and when you look back on it and look what you've accomplished, it's always very nice, you know. And and you feel like you know it's tough during the process, but yeah. you feel really accomplished when you're finished. Yeah, I I, I agree 100 percent on the new Beyonce stuff. Can you give us a little hint about? Um, I know you have to sign confidentiality agreements and stuff, but uh, can you give us a little hint about the direction or the type of song? Is it? It, it was. I mean, obviously, if she did it, it's incredible. Um, well, it's. Let me think. It's it's sort of a mid-tempo, um, guitar-driven, and just amazing vocal. I mean, of course, what you'd expect yeah. from Beyonce. Tricky wrote it. Uh, yes, the Tricky wrote. Um, yes, and Jason mixed it, and it incredible wow know. jason did an incredible job on the mix you know oh, as he always does but uh yeah you know that was another one you know that we had to turn around in like 24 hours you know wow. right was days. it one well, did she perform it on the show no oh she didn't no uh i don't know if it's going to be a single or not it was just a record that she wanted to add to the project the last thing because the album was just mastered so oh i see so it was one of those last minute things yes wow absolutely uh, that's so cool. And and um, did you get a free pair of Beats headphones? <laughs> I didn't actually. I don't. I need to know. I need one of those. What's going on with that? <laughs> no, I didn't get it. I already have a pair, so you know it's it's all right. Didn't I give you one of my old pair? Yeah. Yeah. I gave you the ones that Dre gave me. Yep. There you, you go. You got the original ones. Yep. Um, do you want to try a little batter's box? Are we? Are we? Uh, Corner uh, office is next. Uh, like I said, you want to try, you want to answer some questions from our uh, chat room? Sure we got them. They're, they're screaming Absolutely. over there. I see a lot of capital letters. They're screaming, Drew. Questions. Fire them up, Drew. Cool deal. All right. First off, uh, back to Frank Ocean. What's the vocal chain for Novocaine? The vocal chain was Tube Tech CL1. For the recording, it was 1073 into Tube Tech CL1B. Um, Medium attack, you know, it wasn't real. It wasn't a real choppy vocal. It was kind of laid back and mellow. So medium attack, probably pretty slow release. Um, Basically, what you described on your ITL yeah, segment a few yeah, weeks back. Pretty similar. And then uh, in the mixing, um, and put the tube tech back on, and then after that, an Avalon 2055 EQ. Um, the air on that thing is just incredible. Um, probably boosting around three or four dB at about 12k just for the air. And uh, you know, taking out probably 350, you know, just to get rid of some of that mud in there, to make. Um, I actually had to cut quite a bit of low mid out of his vocal in that to make room for the doo -doo 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 -doo, that that really oh, yeah. heavy loop that's in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the fatter low end part came from the track, and then the vocal was, you know, I rolled out a little bit more low mid from that. But uh, Tube Tech and Avalon 2055 for the vocal chain on Cool that. deal. That was from uh, Pro Audio Files. He actually had a, another follow-up question to that. Okay. What did you think the first time you heard Novocaine? Was it already somewhat mixed uh, when uh, when you got it for the mix? No, I actually uh, he recorded, I recorded, I recorded the, 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 the writing session. So I heard it from the second Tricky started getting those drums and, and, and Frank went in the booth and started creating it. So, so the production too? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, Tricky's uh, uh, right-hand main engineer, B, um, was out of town, I think, with his daughter or something at that time. So I was filling in um, in the recording chair for that day and, you know, was blessed to be able to, to get to record that record. So um, it, it was lucky for me to be able to kind of see the vision from the second it was created. You know, it definitely helped out in the mix. Cool, cool. Uh, question for you, Dave. Okay. From Wiz Products. Question: Does Dave send his dry drum, uh, dry drums, and parallel compressed drums to the drum bus for limiting? Or I guess basically, do you use it for just limiting the bus? Uh, you know, the no, I send, I send, I send everything to that aux. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I send. Think of the aux. Don't think of it as an aux. It'll help you to think of those four auxes. Think of them as four stereo buses. That's the way Michael thinks of them. Uh, because Michael actually doesn't put anything on the on the final stereo bus, so uh, whatever uh, if you mute those four auxes, the song goes away. Everything goes through those. Every once in a while, I'll slide the bass straight to the stereo bus, 
I'm still confused a little bit about what to do with the bass, but I'll work that out. Cool deal. Uh, question from Sonic Pamphlet. Uh, he had a long, drawn-out question, so I'm going to kind of simplify it. Sorry, Sonic, if I messed it up, but listen. Uh, he's curious about your opinions on, like, the loudness wars, as far as... Well, we mentioned. discussed that a little bit with the uh, Brad uh, uh, show. Um, I think that ship sailed, you know. I don't, I, I'm not really worried about that anymore. Right now, um, we've got the techniques and abilities to, to make things as loud as we want. And uh, like my friend Ed, Ed C. used to say, the redder the better, the louder the better. So uh, right now, I'm more concerned about, uh, well, let me say this. Actually, actually, uh, Sonic P, you got a good question. I think, the, I think the argument was about the loudness wars three, four, five years ago. Now it's about the preservation of the producer's vision because now when we receive sessions, um, they're pretty much pre-mixed in a way. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much come to you with the producer's vision built right. into, the, into the process. So, so it's not necessarily about do we want to keep it loud, make it loud. We want to preserve what the producer did. There's some producers like Alex the Kid, who might have a little more something going on on the stereo bus. If you remove that, you remove his sound, you remove his vibe. So I would worry less about the loudness wars and more about preserving the vision of the original production. Well said. And what do you think, Andrew? Uh, I agree with what Dave said 100%. Um, to me, the loudness wars, it doesn't, it's not really a problem, in my opinion, anymore. I mean, there was a couple years where it was kind of a problem, but... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like he said, now um, I think people have gotten so used to hearing kind of processing on, on the two bus or things kind of distressed in a way sometimes mm -hmm. that people's ears have gotten kind of used to hearing it. Mm -hmm. So um, when people are used to something and it, people like it and the, the, the vibe of the record is coming across, I mean, loudness war is kind of irrelevant, mm -hmm. I think. You know? Also, too. Now with laptop speakers, it's not a really a loudness war. It's right. kind of more like a little loudness skirmish. <laughs> right, a loudness with scuffle. earbuds and with right. earbuds and and uh, and uh, yeah, it's not so much a problem speakers. anymore though. I, I think even when it was, you know, people kind of strayed away from it when it kind of generally publicly became a problem. I think you know. The people that were contributing to that problem kind of backed off, and yeah. it, it hasn't you know what, been a um, much of a problem. Sonic, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, use your question as a, an opportunity to philosophize a minute. I've noticed in life the people that complain the most about certain things are the people that tend to know the least about it, and the people that complain about the loudness wars probably don't know how to get their stuff loud. Mm -hmm. If you want to get your stuff loud, send it to Brian Gardner. How hard is that? Right. <laughs> uh, if 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 you like the people that com complain about this on the stereo bus and that on the stereo bus, they they didn't go spend two or three years trying to figure out what it is that that like Andrew said earlier, what it, what is it about those techniques that that have become universally liked and accepted? That, and at some point, they they give the ear the, the impression of listening to something brand new. Mm -hmm. So so the argument is less about this and that, but get the skills to do both and then choose for yourself which you like best until you until you like compression was one of the last things I learned and to, to this day I still learn something about compression every day and there was a time when I made a big deal about the fact that I didn't use compression well truth be told I didn't use it because I didn't understand it and once I understood it now I now I can make a decision whether I like it or I don't like it as opposed to whether I'm limited to arguing about something and, and, and I'm being a little critical about about some people, but if you get on some of the forums, you'll understand there's a lot of people talking about what they don't know and have never tried and never used. So, so learn it, master it. It's, it's for heaven's sakes. This is what we love doing. Spent spending a weekend in, in in your your project studio playing with how to make things loud. That should be the most fun you can have this weekend. Right. That's a good point. Thanks for that, Dave. Uh, back to you, Andrew, uh, from Pro Audio Files. Mm -hmm. Andrew, can you talk about working with Tricky Stewart and how he influences uh, the mixing process on his records and how he's, <laughs> how he's involved? Well, Tricky is the mixing yeah. process. Yeah. He don't Tricky, influence uh, He is the mixing process. Tricky, if he, 
wanted to become a mixer, he would become the greatest mixer probably. I agree. He'd like, be right to the top five. Tomorrow. He knows exactly every sonic piece of the spectrum. He knows every pocket of the record. Um, and he knows exactly what it needs to be from the second the record is created. So um, okay. a record that Tricky is really hands-on with is always going to turn out better than a record that he isn't with because Polo too. Polo has a lot of that right. too. But uh, I mean, I've learned so much from Tricky. You know, um, you know him along with you, of course, and Jason. You know, the three people that have mentored me the most. I learned a lot from Tricky also. Just um, I can be a little arrogant sometimes and think I got it all <laughs> right. And Tricky will just come in and go, "Hold on, hold on, right. hold on, stop the presses." Yeah, let's pull all the faders down. One of down the things that Andrew can do better than anybody is Andrew can. Can can mimic people's voices. Give me give me thirty seconds of Tricky <laughs> telling me my mix sucks. Do, do it do it, Andrew. Uh, I don't know, D. <laughs> I, I think we need to pull the faders down. And reevaluate this. One. I love the EQs, but so he'll pull them down there. He'll pull down the faders. Oh yeah. A, I mean, <laughs> if he doesn't hear the song, I mean the, the oh, song is the most. Tricky will get a little dramatic on it, but I yeah, love it. The song is the most important thing, and oh, it's everything. Uh, it's it's. I mean, a great EQ is cool, like, you know. I don't care. Give me 30 seconds of Jason. <laughs> I can't really do a Jason impression. I've Give, tried to. Do me, it. do me. Oh, man, I'd... let's go to the batter's box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand compression. What the hell is going on? With this? <laughs> what the hell is a threshold? Threshold to what? <laughs> and you guys think I got an easy life hanging out with these bastards. <laughs> Let's, uh, in fact, speaking of batters, we don't, think, we, we, we don't we even work. Did we ever work. get we that just... Depends endorsement? I think, I think I need my Depends. Still working on it. Yeah, they're not, they're not, I can't close the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the batter's box credit. Let's put Andrew in it and have Dave fire some questions at it. All right. There we go. You know what? Um, I am completely unprepared. Hold on one second. Stop the presses. Hey, Drew, ad lib. <laughs> we'll ask another question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, let me find one real quick. Give me two seconds. How's the weather? The weather? Yeah, it's good. Uh, sunny? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Southern 70. California? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay, I'm ready. Well, back to batter's box. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Glad I got to you. Here we go. Roll it. Oh, Herb's going to... Herb's gonna no, 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 no. We don't want to... Don't leave me after the here. show, because Herb will get you. to me. Okay, let's do. Let's do. I'm gonna give you the. I'm gonna give you the track. Okay. And and give me your first impression of of the first plugin that comes to your mind when you're when you're four o'clock in the morning. You got two hours to finish. The first thing that comes to your mind. Lead vocal. Um, Blue Stripe Waves 1176. Cool. And and compressing it and EQ. EQ. Um, Plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. Uh, Mazenberg. The, okay, and the GML? Yeah. For sure. uh, rock guitar. Um, LA3A, the UAD one. Oh, wow. And for EQ, the Trident UAD. The Trident. The A range? Yes. Oh, cool. Banjo. <laughs> <laughs> Banjo. <laughs> uh, I'm messing with you. LA2A and um, Filter Bank, the DSP. Oh, uh, our boys. Yep. Acoustic guitar. Um, LA-2A, the UAD one, and um, EQ, API 550. Oh, I haven't tried that. Yeah, that's cool. Great. Sounds great. The 5K, the top Write knob. Write that down, Drew. Yep. Done. Um, acoustic piano. Uh, massive Passive, UAD, oh. amazing, and 33609, UAD. Oh, cool. Live strings as opposed to uh, Isotope, strings. Ozone 4. The preset we always used to use? You, um, you make sometimes, one? well, I usually use, I don't activate all the engines. Mm -hmm. um, I use the exciter engine, um, exciting a little bit of the mid-range, and then good idea. Uh, the EQ, you know, depending on what kind of string strings they are, or how they were recorded, you know, whether they were live or if they're programmed, um, you know, clean up some mud, excite it, you know, okay. with isotope. Synth pads. Synth pads. Um, if they're really, really bouncy, I need to control them. R compressor. 
Um, I like that one because it doesn't have any color. It just will give you the compression without any other artable artifacts. And for EQ, um, probably filter bank again. Okay. The P or the E? E. E? Yeah. Okay. Jason kind of got us hooked on that. Didn't yeah. He? I, 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 I used to use it and then... No, this isn't about me, though, is it, Herb, this particular segment? Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, let's focus on live drum kits, because you've been okay. doing a lot of live kits over, uh -huh. over there. Uh, kick. Kick drum, um, SSL channel from Waves. Um, for EQ, I'll probably use that to compress and EQ a little bit. Um, the Studer plugin from UAD is amazing. I'll put that on the drum bus, the, the A800, the Studer one. I'll put that on the drum bus, and then also the um, the G bus stereo bus compressor from UAD. I'll put on the drum bus as well. Um, transient designer, most likely, um, you know, just to kind of get to kind of shape those transients and really get them popping. Uh, again, that how much of that I would use would depend on whether it's a rock or if it's kind of a mid tempo or more ballad live drums whether you really want those drums compressed and popping or if you just kind of want the kit just kind of in the back. Um, and, the, and the snare, something similar? Snare, um, absolutely. SSL channel, um, some transit designer, you know, depending on the record. Um, overheads, 33609, the UAD again. Um, Fairchild emulation, the UAD one, which is great. Um, the Waves one sounds really good too, but the UAD one, you kind of get more control. Like, you can actually control the bias and everything of the input to the unit, which is cool. And I feel like the color is a little bit better on the Fairchild, the UAD one, than the Waves okay. one. And, and same similar thing for like a room mic. Are, are, yeah, oh, squashing the piss out of the room mic. Are you using mics. like that level lock or anything on the room mic? Yeah, absolutely. The, the sound toys, the devil lock. Uh, if I'm looking for more aggressive drum sound, I'll use that definitely. Um, again, if it's a mid-tempo or a ballad, I might stay away from that because it's really grungy and grimy sounding. I might just use the 1176, the Waves, or the UAD one. I mean, they both sound great. Um, um, you're really squashed. Uh, sometimes I wouldn't even use reverb because a lot of the drum sounds I was getting, the room mics were really nice, and then when I compressed them really hard, it kind of brought the reverb yeah. out of them. So rather than even putting reverb on the drum kit, I would just blend the, the level of that room in, you know, to my taste of how I wanted it to sound. Well, great, man, because I, I didn't tell, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go over these things with him. These are straight off the top of his head. Yes. I mean, that's a great segment. I got a couple of little quick follow-up things. Sure. When you think of, uh, let's say that we can divide equalizers into um, surgical repair equalizers uh -huh. and then coloration add uh -huh. something to the sound equalizer. What's your, what's your go-to plug-in for like repair work? Where some Repair way? work? Uh, the Mazenberg because you can get those bandwidths so tiny. Um, <coughs> the filter bank P, the same thing, you can get really really sharp bandwidths. Um, do, you, do you click the notch button? Yeah. Oh you do? Okay. Uh, also the the C1SC, uh, you know I got that from you mm -hmm. and Jason, the uh, on how to, you no, know, not Jason, just me. Okay, just <laughs> well, Jason got it from you in terms that I kind of got it from both of you, but uh, damn, damn Drew, am I, am I gonna have to copyright this thing? <laughs> I think so, but uh, I think, you got, I think you're pretty good at this. I've actually started <laughs> using it on other stuff too, and maybe even sharpening the bandwidth on it because sometimes, uh, rather than just dipping out of frequency, you might miss it if you do that. So, um, using that allows you just to kind of attenuate it where you want to but still keep the fullness you know if it's low mid mm -hmm. or keep the power in the mid range if it's you know like the one to three K which tends to get harsh in vocals and, and quickly um, oh I didn't say for coloration yeah for coloration um, the API or the uh, the 60 or the 50 the both fifth, the 50 I've been using the 60s a little more lately and I yeah like the 60s too. great on vocals I love the 60 on vocals I love the 8K and the 16K. The 16K, you can actually really pull that that, gra yeah. that knob really, really far, yeah. and uh, it doesn't get it harsh or brittle. My hearing was going bad, but it's just no. smooth. Yeah, it's really, really smooth. It's great for lead vocals, uh, great for acoustic pianos. Um, uh, let's see, what else? 
Is there a color? What, what our audience? What would they be the most surprised to find out that your first choice was a plug-in and not a piece of outboard gear? What would they be the most surprised, like, to know about about you when you think of oh I, uh, I've got this particular sound, and your first thought is a plug-in as, as opposed to a piece of outboard well, gear. Well, I'm can just you give comfortable. Them, give them confidence about. I'm comfortable with working with plugins because I'm kind of a. You know, in from the new breed of engineering, not really the old school, where the old school guys are comfortable using outboard gear because that's what they grew up and came up working with, and their ears are so in tune to the sounds of those pieces of equipment. Well put. Well, I, I mean, I feel that way about plugins. Like I, I have a lot of outboard gear that I like to use as well, but but I'm definitely more comfortable working with plugins because that's kind of how I learned, um, and that's what I my ears have gotten used to hearing, and when I'm hearing a certain sound in my head, it's quicker and more efficient and easier for me to go to a plug-in than to think of a piece of outboard gear. You know, I have a couple pieces that I use every day so I know what they sound like, but yeah. the plugins, and I mean, one thing that we talk about all the time is you can do things with plugins that you can't do with outboard gear, you know, like yeah, like automation. Like automation and... Are, is, is automation part of your surgical technique now? Absolutely. I think the automation process is what creates the whole mix for me. Like the EQs and, and the compressors are cool, but to me, the feeling of the record comes from the automation. I mean, I'm writing every single track. Um, I'm constantly writing, you know, from the beginning. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not, not just writing vocals, I'm writing drums, I'm writing pianos, I'm writing strings. Every little spot where I can find a pocket to yeah. feature something, you know, I'm bringing things in, up and, and kind of what Michael was talking about with the compression, kind of yeah. making it move back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm doing that with automation, kind of having things kind of swim and move and it, make it feel like a song, yeah. you know, make yeah, it have feeling. Your stuff is, is incredible. I, I, <coughs> I appreciate I've it. I've learned you know. so much just talking with you. I learned <laughs> I need to go and get some sleep. I learned, uh, what else did we learn today, Drew? Uh, we don't give a crap anymore, Herb. We just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have a meeting afterwards about this. <laughs> Andrew, thanks, man. Andrew, oh, you got it. I learned so much, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And, and give us one little thing that we can look forward to hearing from you on the, uh, out there in the radio world soon. Uh, well, this Lauren Elena record. Yeah. Um, uh, the one, yeah. Uh, th I think that this is. Her Does this first have single. the famous banjo in it? Is this? There's no banjo, but there is pedal steel. So all you country fans will not be disappointed. <laughs> pedal steel and plenty of guitars and uh, an amazing vocal that um, that she just she's an incredible talent and. Does know. she blow out the mic a lot? I mean, she seems to be pretty powerful. No, I mean, well, I mean the the engineers that were recording, you know. Tech and Coop, oh, and, and yeah, the, uh, they're amazing. So yeah. uh, they were able to keep the sonic portion of it under control. Um, but she's, I mean, she's incredible. And say hi to uh, all the Red Zone folks. I will Tricky absolutely. And all those guys. Uh, also, make sure you get to all of our ways to reach us. We're looking for your comments. We like your stuff back. Let's hear about the show. The page is up now. At Pensado Place, our Twitter handle, uh, Pensado's Place at thisweekend.com is our email. Uh, obviously, our chat room stays open, and um, YouTube and Facebook, and we'll get back to you. Thanks for your comments. We want to thank Andrew for coming, and Dave, let's uh, got to roll. All right, guys, listen, this has been a fun show for me. I appreciate you guys hanging and tolerating uh, uh, our silliness. We, we had a good time. You can tell I love and care about Andrew. He's a very special person and someone that if you want to learn, uh, you, can, you can listen to his records and learn a lot from him. He's got a lot of heart, a lot of soul, uh, gobs of technical abilities, and he's found a way, uh, like all the guys that have worked with me, of, of combining the technical side and the, and the feeling and emotional side. And we're, we're, we're just real happy to have you on the show, Andrew. Thanks I, for coming by. Thanks for letting me have, be here, man. Was, Drew, uh, watch every week, Nothing too. to thank you about. So don't worry. <laughs> it's messed up, Herb. man. Thank me about it. Thank you, Drew. I'll thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Andrew. Thank you, Drew. All right, guys. Hey, uh, I, let, let, give me a couple ideas for an ITL next week. I've got some ideas. I'm thinking about going philosophical, but I know you don't want that. So keep me from keep me from doing harm to the show. Give me some ideas for next week's ITL, and I'll see you then. <laughs>